is ETS News 29 with your hosts, Lauren Lascotti and Ava Wells. Good evening and welcome to ETS News 29. I'm Lauren Lascotti. And I'm Ava Wells. Thank you for joining us tonight. Our top story tonight, the Shrewsbury High School Unified Track and Field season is wrapping up nicely. The growing team of over 50 high school students has the main goal to unify peers without intellectual disabilities. Over the past few months, the team has been improving on their track and field skills, all the while forming new, lasting friendships. Here's Alexa Roderick with more. There are many great ways to get involved in the Shrewsbury High School community, but some people are looking for a way to make a difference. Unified Track is a program at SHS that offers students to assist those with special needs in running track while making close friendships. This school year, there are currently over 100 participants in the Unified Track program at SHS. These students have the option to run in the 100, 400, 4x100, and 600. Field events include javelin, shot put, and long jump. Volunteers run with the team members and support them in field events. The team practices every day after school in the spring and has about six meets per season. Students are provided with an opportunity to join a sports team in which they assist their community. Students love to see support offered by Unified Track coaches. Um, so the Unified uh, program is in place to give students with disabilities that wouldn't otherwise have access to opportunities in sports. So students partner up with students with special needs to allow them to compete in different events. We do javelin, we do shot put, we do long jump as far as field events, and then as far as races, we're doing the 100 in which a partner might encourage somebody to run, stay with them for the longer races, so on and so forth. Um, and then for the relays, um, we have students teach some of the students with disabilities how to pass off the baton. So we brought it to Shrewsbury High School in the spring of 2014. Um, so this is our fifth season. The captains Christopher Liu and Kevin Orovice and coaches Miss Hall, Mr. Gonzalez, Miss Wallace, and Mr. Moran work hard in being supportive and inclusive to run an encouraging team. Friendships between the students with special needs and the volunteers have developed through the team. Students are encouraged to put forth their best effort and improve weekly. There's been a lot of positive feedback from members of this team. My favorite part was hanging out with my friend Tim. My favorite field event is the javelin. A -N -A. Hi, my name is Justin. My favorite part of track is trying new things. It helps be not scale. Practices are held on the outdoor fields, which students attend after school. Throughout the season, students have come to each meet and practice with determination to do their best. This past season, the team has competed against schools such as Grafton, Auburn, Northbridge, and Worcester Tech. So far, the Shrewsbury Unified team is undefeated and plan to keep up their winning streak. The positive environment allows for the team to consistently grow and excel each year. Well, I've been part of Unified Sports here at Shrewsbury for two years now, and I really think that it has a huge positive impact. Um, you walk down the hall and you see kids and you say hi to them and you really make great friendships. Um, I've definitely seen a change in just day-to-day -day life at the high school. I feel like the whole atmosphere is more positive and kids are definitely more um, inclusive and aware of what's going on. I think people just hear a lot of positive things about it and they hear about the friendships and the close relationships you create with other kids on Unified. So I think it's growing more popular because kids want to be a part of that change. The next Unified Track Meet is coming up Friday, May 24th. Make sure to come support Shrewsbury High School. Those interested in joining Unified Track should be sure to attend next year's informational meeting before the spring season begins. This is Alexa Roderick reporting for ETS News 29. Back to you in the studio. With the 2019 fall season behind us and summer right around the corner, we look back on our new installation of the turf at the high school and how it has influenced student-athlete injuries. There are negative and positive effects to turf and grass fields. With more in the story is Slater Mercati. The turf has been installed at Shoesbar High School for the better part of the year now. We're here to let you know about how it's impacted injuries so far. The fall season is where the most injuries occur. Mainly football at 30 to 35% of all injuries. The turf helps prevent injuries because the turf is more stable in all weather conditions, rather than grass where it may shift in the rain. Now we have Lily Shaughnessy, one of the athletic training interns at Shrewsbury High School. Um, I think that it's definitely helped like, bring them down because 
it's like a flat surface on the turf so it keeps it level and if their ankles were to like roll a certain way it would cause like a lot more issues and like it helps them like transfer better and I think the track itself is also a lot more bouncy and it's not as like hard on the runners ankles and knees and stuff. The people that play on the turf the most really depends on the season. In the fall, field hockey, soccer, and football all play games on the turf. Moving to spring, lacrosse is really the only sport that plays their games on the turf. Next, we have an interview from Walter Hildebrand, athletic trainer at Shrewsbury High School. In the fall season, um, we see more injuries than anything. And the reason being is, you know, we have a collision-based sport such as football. We have contact sports like soccer, um, whether it be you know, exercise and reduced issues from cross country. Uh, hands down, we see more injuries in, uh, in the fall season. In fact, artificial turf has many pros, but also many cons, just like real grass. Some of the pros are it's easier to maintain, saves water, no cutting needed, and with that, there's no need for other maintenance. Along with that, the turf always looks the same and no fertilizer is needed. This makes it great for kids and pets. Some of the cons of some turf materials can really cause cancer and get hot in the summer. The turf can get up to 140 degrees. The major impact on an athlete's health is that turf can cause skin abrasions. The effect the turf's had on the injuries so far this year is kind of hard to determine. Um, being that we started late in the fall with allowing athletes on the turf, it wasn't until late, in our, late October. So it was really hard to gauge based off our fall season what we've seen. Um, so far, Without a doubt, we're seeing a lot more skin abrasions, um, and that's really just, again, when kids are falling down on the turf, we're seeing a lot of cuts or scrapes or whatnot, um, just due to the texture of the turf, digging into the skin, and uh, cutting it up a little bit more than uh, typical grass would. Walter's office is located outside the field house and next to the weight room. Walter works after school hours. During games, Walter can be found on the sidelines. This is Slater Markov reporting for ETS News 29. Back to you. Thanks, Slater. School start times have always been subject to debate. What time should high school begin? What are the benefits to a later start time? What are the challenges dist districts are trying to alter school times? Nikita Sakaram has more on this story. The debate over school start times keeps everyone up. Early start times cause students to lose sleep and doze off in class, but later times can create issues in bus scheduling with other schools within the district. At Shrewsbury High School, students begin at 7.30. Yes. Studies show that teens' sleep schedules are shifted. They are becoming tired later and thus sleeping later to get the same amount of sleep as an adult. Adolescents find time to sleep only after extracurricular activities end, homework is finished, and phones are finally turned off. This combination of late bedtimes and early school start times results in many sleep-deprived teens. The American Academy of Pediatrics recommends middle schools and high schools start at 8.30 or later. However, according to a 2014 school health study by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services for Disease Control and Prevention, 93% of U.S. high schools start before 8.30. In Shrewsbury, where the high school starts at 7.30, Superintendent Dr. Sawyer talks about the challenges about changing earlier start times. We have limited financial resources, of course. Um, it is something that uh, you know, people are used to a certain uh, routine, um, and uh, making a decision that would really change how things work in people's homes relative to when they can go to work. Um, students at the high school level who work at jobs after school or athletics. Um, these are all things that school districts have solved, but not every school district is the same size uh, with a large number of students who are bused to school each day. If it were an easy problem to solve, we would have solved it already. Adolescents with the necessary 8 to 10 hours of sleep are more likely to become overweight, suffer from symptoms of depression, perform poorly in school, and engage in drinking, smoking, and other drugs. Westboro made the actual change this year, and the high school now starts at 8:10. The Westboro superintendent, Miss Bach, describes some of the improvements she's seen in her students since their change. I think we have informal data. I know that teachers feel that first and second period is more engaged. I think our students feel that they're better rested in terms of the start of the day. The research was just really compelling that you can't look at tired teens and you can't read the brain research and not try to do something. So. 
Later start times have some clear benefits. However, scheduling changes make it hard to change. Back to ETS News 29. Speaking of school, we're in the midst of Shrewsbury prom season. While prom seems to be a simple, fun event, there's more controversy surrounding these dances than more people expect. Nicole Cardimitriou has more on the story. It's prom season, and high school students all over the state are getting ready for the big night. However, many students find themselves pondering the very important question, is prom really worth it? For some, prom is a magical event that they will never forget, but for others, it is a stressful and rather expensive experience that they would want to skip altogether. Okay. Over the years, prom has transformed into an entirely different experience for students. Originally, proms were hosted as a chance for students to practice their manners and etiquette. However, they have evolved into something much more complex, requiring large amounts of time, money, and preparation for each student involved. Senior prom for Shrewsbury High School takes place on May 24th, and junior prom took place on May 11th. Senior Class Vice President Natalia Cardimitrio has been working to plan this prom for months. I think prom is a really good way for the class to kind of get together, especially senior prom. It's one of the last major events that you're going to have with your high school class. Um, it's a good way to dress up and have fun. I know, especially for me, I don't really like to dress up every single day. So when I get to go to prom, wear a nice dress and wear makeup, be with my friends. It's a great time, especially because you also like dance and you get to eat and you get to be with people who you don't normally see in classes. So that's why I think prom is a really good opportunity. Prom tends to be a very expensive event for students. According to the New York Times, the average cost of prom for students nationwide in 2013 is $1,139. Joseph A. Bank, a men's formal wear shop, reported the average cost for renting and buying a tuxedo, including accessories. Rental charges ranged from $200 to $300, and full purchase ranges from $300 to $400. According to Carbonos, Worcester's for local formal wear shop, the average cost of a prom dress ranges from $250 to $500. In addition to the cost of a dress and a tuxedo, expenses may include hair, makeup, spray tan, nails, shoes, corsages, and boutonnieres. According to Danielson's Flowers, a town favorite floral shop, a corsage costs between $35 and $45, and a boutonniere costs between $10 and $12. In addition, students have to purchase prom tickets. Shrewsbury High's tickets for senior prom are $60 and for ju junior prom, $65. Senior at SHS, Michaela Mack, has been openly vocal about her reservations towards prom. To go to prom. Um, I think the idea for a fair amount of students is it's an overwhelming experience. A lot of people see it as something that's fun and exciting, but then there's a good half of the student populace who think that it's something to be stressed about because you have to find a dress, uh, you have to find a date, you have to figure out before prom plans and prom plans and after prom plans and the amount of money that you're spending on it and all of it just becomes an exorbitant amount of pressure on kids and especially at the end of the year, it's something that a lot of students don't want. Each class fundraises and holds events. The money that they make from those events go towards prom. Students who don't attend prom may hang out with friends who are also not going or relax at home. Despite the cost, prom is a huge social event. From the preparation and the picture taking before to the dinner and the dance itself, prom is a very eventful and memorable night. Prom is different for everyone, whether students want to go and have fun with their friends or they just want to stay at home and have a night to themselves, the question as to if prom is worth it or not still remains something for them to decide for their own. I'm Nicole Cardimitriou reporting live from ETS News 29. Back to you. Staying on the topic of school, the time spent on screens has significantly increased for the Shrewsbury School District due to the incorporation of iPads being used in the classroom. It's not just Shrewsbury, however. It seems like the nation has taken part in this global phenomenon where kids are being affected physically and emotionally from just being on their screens. But is it all that bad or are there benefits to take away from technology? Here's Jason Taylor with more on the story. In a rising world of new technology, it seems that screens are everywhere, whether it be your laptop, iPad, or your new iPhone X. Everybody's got a screen, but not everybody knows how screen time can affect your health and how it can be used in a positive and beneficial way. Screen time is spending time in front of any electronic device. This includes your phone, iPads, tablets, computers, and television. According to a 2018 report from the Pew Research Center, teenagers ages 13 to 17 spend the most time on screens out of any age group. 
According to Lifespan.org, the average teenager spends 6 hours and 40 minutes each day looking at a screen. According to Psychology Today, there is no clear-cut answer as to how much screen time is too much. It depends on a variety of factors ranging from consumption versus creation to media characteristics like whether or not the media is educational. I think when it's being as obsessed over and it's not using it in a healthy manner, you know, using it for research or the internet can be fantastic because there's so many different resources out there on it, um, but it has to be used appropriately. According to Pew Research, in 2015, 91% of teens use the internet on a mobile device. The benefits of screen time include easier access to academics and educational sites. Also, interactive gaming develops better cognitive thinking and problem solving. Too much time in front of a screen can cause obesity and laziness. It can cause problems in school like behavioral problems or lack of attention and a decrease in performance during school. Especially in younger kids in elementary or middle school, kids tend to spend t the most time on screens at night from 7 to 11 p.m., sometimes later. This also is a factor into sleep loss amongst teens. Kids spend time on screens almost everywhere, whether it be in their homes, at school, or on the go. A sec excessive screen time can lead to weight problems like obesity. Other physical consequences include pain in fingers, neck, back, wrists, as well as narrowed eye blood vessels. Long amounts of screen time for teens can lead to depression and anxiety, as well as a risk for the child to be cyberbullied and picked on online. So emotionally, there's a lot of controversy about screen, screen time um, because people don't want to admit that it has negative effects. But there's a lot of research out there to show that social media and screen time in general is increasing the anxiety and depression among teens and children as well as adults. According to KidsHealth.org, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends kids from 5 to 18 should only get two hours a day in front of screens and that they should consistently limit all forms of media consumption. Parents play a big role in getting their child to limit screen time whether it's turning on a certain setting on their kids' phones that limit the amount of time they can spend each day on their device or creating electronic free zones in their house. Because after all, you should only be allowed two hours of screen time per day. Tinker.com says that young people can make screen time more productive by not only doing educational things like schoolwork, but doing activities such as art or coding that can be applied in and out of school. An hour or two of watching a PBS video, probably not such a bad thing an hour or two of watching something totally mindless just to veg out, really not a bad thing. So in a, one, one, to one hour, maybe two hours of something that's not destructive really probably isn't bad. Although there may be benefits to screen time, too much of it can be detrimental to people's health, especially with the growing use of technology over the past few years. Kids are at a higher risk for problems relating to obesity, anxiety, and poor performance in school. So in the end, remember to limit the amount of time you spend on a screen each day and you'll be healthier and still take away the benefits technology can provide to people. This is Jason Taylor reporting for ETS News 29. Back to you. With second semester coming to an end, students find themselves more and more find themselves more and more about their futures. Internships are growing increasingly more popular. Internships are able to help some of the students narrow down fields of interest in their life. It helps them go to college with a better idea of what major they are looking to study. Lauren, I know you looked more into this story. Let's take a look. Throughout the Shrewsbury High School community, internships have now become a newer addition for students. Internships are now counted as school credit and look great on college applications. The guidance program here at Shrewsbury High School has been a huge contender into the creation of in-school and out-of-school internships. There are a wide range of internships available at SHS. In-school internships count as 2.5 credits and are treated as an elective. We talked with guidance counselor Mrs. Rice and asked her a few questions surrounding the concerns of internships. Anyone can be an intern at Shrewsbury and it all depends on your schedule. If you have any study halls that you want to fill in, um, you would just come see your school counselor to see when that would be. And um, anyone can be a mentor in the building. Any adult who wants to have an intern um, has that opportunity to go ahead and make that time. Our school also incorporates the ACE Mentor Program, which is an out-of-school internship. This program is for seniors who want insight into their intended major 
as well as run by committed volunteer mentors. So the ACE internship program is right now for seniors, um, and it would be done at the end of the year, and you apply to be in that program. And that's an internship where you actually leave school. And so instead of coming to school every day, you report to an outside location. The mentors of these internships are the teachers and faculty that take on the responsibility of teaching interested students in their field of expertise. Mentors are able to utilize interns as an extra set of hands benefiting both them and the student. Depending on the type of work the mentor is involved in, tasks for interns may vary. Mentors of the ACE internship are able to teach differently than those of in-school, which many times show students a different way of learning. Internships very much help mentors by forcing them to better their own work in order to lead a good example to their student. The biggest beneficiaries of this entire process are the interns themselves. Not only do they gain school credit and another strength for their college applications, they are also able to gain insight into a possible field they may want to pursue. Internships allow a break from in-school learning and apply a student's abilities to real-world encounters. More specific to the interns of the ACE Mentor Program, these students must still meet many guidelines. They must produce their own findings to help them better understand the work as well as preserve the learning process. We also interviewed student Colleen McNamara, who is an intern for Mr. Costa. Um, it gives you real life experience and you're talking with real people about real issues, kind mm -hmm. of, um, and how to run a mini business almost. This is Lauren Lascotti reporting for ETS 29 News. Back to you in the studio. Thanks for the story, Lauren. I'm sure there are students who will be interested in exploring that option for next year. An arising problem with teens is the lack of sleep they are receiving on a nightly basis. It is important to understand why teens are not getting enough sleep and to identify alternate solutions to help. Here is Ryan Meyer with more on the story. At SHS and high schools across the country, an arising problem is the amount of sleep teens are getting on a school night. Students often show up to school tired and running on a low amount of energy, causing students to be incapable of reaching their full potential. There are many causes to a lack of sleep, but at such a developmental age in their lives, it is essential for them to get enough sleep. Sleep is important for everyone, but especially teenagers. According to the National Institute of Neurological Disorders and Stroke, Sleep is important to a number of brain functions, including how nerve cells communicate with each other. Not to mention, sleep maintains the pathways in the brain and allows humans to learn and create new memories. Students need more sleep because their mind and body are both growing and developing. In addition, most students aren't getting enough. As an effect, students are very tired the following day and perform worse, causing them to be less attentive, productive, and motivated in school, sports, and other activities. According to Medical News Today, some effects are mood swings, difficulty learning new concepts, unintentional weight gain, and in some cases, depression. We spoke with Mrs. Johnson, the school nurse, to get more on this topic. Um, sleeplessness leads to your inability to focus, um, interferes with everything, how, how you feel in general, your clarity of mind, your ability to memorize. Um, you don't really feel like eating well and properly, which, you know, poor nutrition adds to the sleeplessness. So it's kind of a vicious cycle. So your bodies are always growing. High school is a tremendous time. Your hormones are starting to kick in. Lots of different things are happening within your body. And you grow the most and develop the most when you're at rest. Your body develops the most that way. So that is why it's crucial you know, to grow, to create new brain cells. All those things are happening while we're resting. According to Life Science, the amount of homework given and balancing that with extracurricular activities is a great cause to lack of sleep. In addition, in the 21st century, social media has taken over, and with school and other activities, screens are taking over students' sleep schedules. Screens affect the quality of sleep as well. Further research from the Nationwide Children's Hospital proves that the recommended amount of sleep is between 8 to 10 hours to refuel the brain and body. That would mean students should sleep anywhere between 8.30 to 10.30 on a school night. To see how that correlates to students at SHS, freshman Abib Vitakuri helped by describing his sleep schedule. Uh, usually in the mornings I can't really focus as much because I'm tired. Um, I try and take a nap after school or whenever I have free time. As stated by the National Sleep Foundation, on average, students in high school sleep around 11.30 to midnight on a school night, which allows them to sleep about 7 hours. Teachers see that students are not working to their full potential because they are tired, 
and that shows less effort on tests, assignments, and participation. The National Sleep Foundation says that students should see the school nurse and find effective ways to sleep better. However, if it gets to a point where a student's lack of sleep is affecting their mental health, they should definitely see a sleep specialist. This is Ryan Meyer reporting for ETS News 29. Back to you in the studio. The school year is almost over, which means students everywhere are starting to feel the heat. With finals, prom, graduation, and family life all approaching, it's pretty clear that students need help. There are many places at SHS where students can relieve the stress. For more, here's Dean Drummy. It's that time of the year again. Final exams and other exciting end of the year activities are rapidly approaching, which means student stress levels are rising. As summer nears, it is important for students to recognize what causes their stress and how to handle it appropriately because stress is a part of life. According to Medline Plus, stress is defined as a feeling of emotional or physical tension. It can come from any event or thought that makes you feel frustrated, angry, or nervous. Symptoms include low self-esteem, feeling agitated or frustrated, insomnia, and many others. It is often found most frequently among teenagers in high school and young adults in college. In a school setting, the most common supports include teachers, administrators, school psychologists, and guidance counselors. SHS Director of Health, Physical Education, and Family Consumer Science, Mr. Jeff Lane, noticed that many students are stressed out at this time of the year. People start to pull away. Um, people start to isolate themselves. Um, they start to not do some of the work that they're supposed to do, and they, and they um, keep to themselves. When students are stressed out, it can affect their academic performance as well as their personal lives. However, stress does not only apply to students, but the general public as well. As a result, it is important for everyone to understand potential stressors and how to handle them. For students, these stressors could be an upcoming test in a class, presenting in front of a class, or even tension at home. There are many ways to cope with stress, whether it be a hobby or meditation, but talking to a professional is an option that should not be overlooked. Dr. Spisto, the school psychologist, voiced his opinion on the matter. School can be stressful. And, and I think sometimes um, the uncertainty of um, where you stand in terms of going to college or your grades can contribute to that. So we try to be very transparent. There are many other areas within the school that can help students cope with their stress. This includes the school library, where the students are welcome to take their time in the maker space to meditate, use coloring books, and do other activities. Students are also allowed to rest in the nurse's office if they are not feeling well which many students often take advantage of. Also, the school raised awareness to mental health by playing music in the hallways in between classes during Mental Health and Wellness Week. With the drastic increase in mental illness in the past decade, Shrewsbury High School has been implementing new resources to help students ease their stress. The school psychologist, library, and nurse's office can be excellent places to go if students need help. This is Dean Drummy reporting for ETS News 29. Back to you. Homework is assigned with the purpose of benefiting students, giving them more practice with material outside of school and extending their learning. With after school activities such as sports, clubs, arts and music, students are burdened by a large amount of stress to complete the work. Cheating is a common escape for students to get their work done in less time. Here is Linda Diaz with more on this take. Cheating is prohibited in all schools, but yet it still happens. Despite the repercussions, students continue to use others' work, find answers online, and have apps do it for them. In this day and age, technology has evolved, becoming more and more prevalent in schools, and cheating has evolved along with it. One of the more common ways that students cheat is on their homework. Assigned nightly, students are expected to complete work at home. However, due to the pressure of busy schedules and getting good grades, students often resort to cheating. This includes utilizing apps such as Photomath to do it for them, finding answers online, getting other students' work, and sharing their own. Since a multitude of resources are readily available, this practice has become normalized within the eyes of students. According to the Harvard Graduate School of Education and Research conducted by Donald McGabe, Kenneth Butterfield, and Linda Trevno, almost 40% of college students said that they consider digital plagiarism either not cheating at all or just trivial cheating. Therefore, most students see what they are doing as ethical collaborating instead of the frowned-upon act of cheating. According to a 2013 study conducted by Molly Galloway, Joshua Connor, and Dennis Pope, students at high performing high schools similar to Shrewsbury spend more than three hours a night doing homework. The results also indicated that students who did more than three hours of homework were more engaged and active in the classroom, but as a side effect experienced more academic stress, physical health problems, and lack of balance in their lives. A survey taken by a group of students from Shrewsbury High School revealed that it takes around two to three hours on average to complete homework. 
Out of these students, 90% participate in some sort of after-school activity. This can be become a problem because the amount of time that students have to do their homework is significantly shortened, which in turn shortens the amount of sleep they get every night. Unfortunately, lack of time and energy greatly contributes to why students cheat since the majority would rather submit an assignment they cheated on than see a zero pop up in power school. Currently, the district is gathering feedback from the community on homework to help plan for future years and hopefully improve the experiences of both teachers and students. The Shrewsbury High School Code of Conduct defines cheating as obtaining information or copying another's work for the purpose of presenting it as its own work or providing information to others who have not acquired it through the work of their own. Consequences for cheating are extensive, including receiving a zero on the given assignment or test, being removed from honor societies, and alerting the student's parents, school counselor, and multiple other administrators. Of course, the cases are more serious than others. English department head of Ms. Trombley encouraged her department to use professional judgment when handling a possible case of cheating. In her department, the more, most common form of cheating is plagiarism, which can range from accidentally leaving out citation or purposely copying and pasting from online. Currently, teachers must distinguish students' own words from plagiarizing. Some colleges use programs such as SafeAssign to find plagiarism, but they are too expensive for Shrewsbury to implement. To gather more insight on why students cheat and how to prevent it, we turned to the math department head, Ms. Johnson, and history teacher, Mr. Feldman. I think that, as with respect to homework, um, homework in general, before we had Alex even, um, in electronic homework, um, you know, kids used to sit in the hallway and they copy each other's work. Um, now I think there's more sending things via technology to each other. Um, Alex, I think kids who don't want to do it have found ways because of the electronic um, technology, again, to find ways to cheat. In my experience, if students want to get the work done, they're going to do it in any means they possibly can. It's not fair of us as teachers to really try to manage everything we can outside of school, but you really hope that you instill good habits in the students and try to establish a level of honesty and really discourage any form of cheating like that. But the classic line that was told to me was, it's not cheating, it's collaborating. And as teenagers, I think that line makes a lot of sense, but as teachers, it's a little bit different because there are certain expectations we have that students will accomplish outside of school. And if a student is relying on another person to really kind of help them do that, they're really only hurting themselves come test time when they don't know how to do that same skill. In the end, they're cheating themselves because the goal is really for learning. And if they're not doing the practice, it's just like with any sports or anything else, if they don't do the practice, then they're not gonna get out of it what they need to. If history tells us one thing is that if people are given the opportunity to be dishonest and kind of really maximize their potential, some people take that route. Maybe it's our competitive nature, maybe it's the need to succeed, maybe it's the pressures from parents, teachers, external things, but ultimately it's that individual who is cheating is the one who suffers because you're really kind of learning dishonest means and. Whether that happens soon or, or later, it does catch up to people. Cheating at Shrewsbury High School is prohibited, and there is a strict sequence of events that take place once a student is caught cheating. Every day, teachers try to combat cheating by checking submitted work by students. However, with technology advancing, it is becoming harder to catch every student who hands in work that is not their own. In the end of the day, it is really up to the student to decide if they want to do the material on their own or risk heavy consequences to get the good grade. This is Linda Diaz reporting from ETS News 29. Back to you. Well, that's it for tonight's ETS News 29. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Eva Wells. And I'm Lauren Lascotti. Have a good night. So, oh, good yeah. job. Good. Um,